just so insane. I don't know. Russian military. Actually, let's let's just move on. Let's watch Chibai that. Woman, your favorite neighborhood Russian. Hi guys, Zoom today. Welcome to a brand new video. And in today's video, guys, we're gonna be talking about the mobilization in Russia and why everybody is trying to leave. Yet again, guys, this video is gonna be uploaded like five days after the actual news broke out because honestly, I've been trying to collect myself to record this video for the last two days, but I just couldn't because I feel fucking awful. I'm not gonna lie. So yeah, I'm pretty sure all of you already know the news. I don't even need to tell you what happens. The Russian government, the Russian state Duma have added such uh, terms as martial law, wartime, and mobilization into the Russian criminal code. And then one day later, Putin came out with a speech and address on live. The thing is, Russia's strategy for war is that you have the majority Russian population in some part of the country, so they need to liberate it. That's what's happening in Ukraine's West. Same thing with Moldova. Yeah, dude, that's what they're doing. They're mass, they're mass relocating. <laughs> They're mass relocating to Georgia so they can, uh, you know, set up, uh, you know, they, they can set up the Georgian front beyond the territories that they have already. That's their goal. That's why they're sending the, the babushkas, you know? TV saying that he's announcing a partial mobilization in the Russian Federation. Partial mobilization in the Russian Federation. You guys finish the rest of the rap in the comments. Anyway, Putin once again gave a classic speech saying how the West is, you know, threatening to destroy. By the way, for the record, I just want people to understand like, while Russia does do shit like that, okay, that kind of like anti anti immigrant sentiment, anti refugee sentiment is exactly what Americans think like Mexico is doing. You know what I mean? You're just repeating. You're just being xenophobic for Georgia at this point. And it's understandable that Americans have takes like this because, like, Americans are so xenophobic, they got xenophobia for other countries. You know what I mean? Like, they literally, you got American motherfuckers being like, nah, man, we need border walls right now for, for Georgia. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, yeah, we got it, dude. You, you love uh, having uh, this, this insanely reactionary worldview. Russia and essentially announcing a so-called partial mobilization according to which people with prior military experience or people who have served in the army could be drafted to go to Ukraine. Then later the Russian Minister of Defense uh, Sergei Shaigu also came out saying that Sergei in the first Shaigu. wave of the draft they're gonna draft 300,000 people and there's gonna be multiple waves. So yeah the Russian government basically said that this mobilization is very limited it's only gonna affect like soldiers you guys shouldn't worry about anything. Honestly I could go into detail but I don't think it really matters because first of all None of the things that have been said verbally by Russian government representatives are actually in the decree that Putin signed. The decree that he signed about the mobilization actually doesn't specify who's going to be mobilized. So the decree basically allows anybody to get mobilized. And also, there's been pretty decently big protests in Russia right after this mobilization was announced. And the men who got arrested at the protest are being given mobilization like draft letters. So basically, if you go to protest against the mobilization, if you get arrested, you get get mobilized. And this is not some speculation, by the way. Even uh, Putin's press secretary, Peskov, has said that uh, drafting people who've been arrested at protests actually doesn't break the law in any way, and it's completely legal. So, yeah, I don't think... Oh, thank God. <laughs> thank God they figured out the legal boundaries on that one, you know what I mean? I was That's what I was worried about. It really matters, and not like the Russian government... It is evil as fuck, dude, yes. ...at this point has a very good track record of telling the truth. I mean, literally, some Kremlin spokespeople were saying that there's not gonna be any mobilization like one, two days before the mobilization actually was announced, so, yeah. So yeah, there's a reason why everybody in Russia right now, especially men, because women can be mobilized as well if they're like doctors and stuff, by the way. This is why everybody is literally shitting their pants right now, and even though I'm out of Russia currently, I worry for my friends and my family, you know? It's fucked up. Let's not forget about the fact that Putin also always said that he's never gonna change the constitution Constitution, which he did. Putin also said that he will never raise the retirement age, which he did. I mean, I'm gonna be sitting here for like three hours naming everything, but you know what I'm getting at. And as far as the way the mobilization is actually going, there's already a ton of videos online of like people being taken away, of people saying goodbyes to their, you know, husbands. Fathers. There's been reports that apparently about five uh, military draft centers, basically that's the center where they do the medical checkup and basically like actually direct you where you're gonna go. Five of those officers were little. I've seen videos of people fucking breaking their own legs and shit so they don't have to get drafted. I mean, it, it's really fucked up. It's really fucked up.
fire in Russia, actually. The Russian government also announced that they're gonna be giving out Russian citizenships to migrants who live and work in Russia that uh, are gonna be volunteering to go and fight in Ukraine. I mean, it's... I don't know what the fuck is going on, honestly. But all I know is this is a troubling time for everybody. Look, I got a cousin who's one year younger than me. Love him to death. He's my brother, okay? Good guy, too. He's in a conscript army right now. He was actually just about to get demobilized. You know, like, finish his service in, like, two months or something. And now I don't even know what's gonna happen, honestly. Most of my friends back in Russia, they're all young guys my age. And the thing is, some of my friends did move in March, when everything started initially, like I did. But not everybody can afford it. Going to another country and uh, even getting the tickets and renting an apartment is quite expensive. My classmate literally dropped the weight on his big toe. It snapped off like a carrot. Morbid, but at least not going to war. Jesus Christ. Oh! That's fucking nuts! That was enough. Russians in the chat are like, wait a minute. That was enough? Okay. We will do. You know who's not getting mobilized, dude? The parkour motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Those guys are parkouring and, 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 you know, doing it wrong one time. And that's it. Then, boom. No more mobilization for you. Toe is enough! I know. I saw the video of someone breaking their leg to avoid conscription. You just submit evidence as you as a bottom? No, that's just the Turkish military, my man. That doesn't work that way. You can, however, submit evidence that at the top of the hour, if you want to avoid it, you can submit the evidence that you're subscribed and won't see the top of the hour ad break. Because at the top of the hour, there's a six-second ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or for free with the Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you get one free Prime subscription a month. Use it on your favorite broadcaster. Hopefully, that's me. Um, that's right. Uh, you can also get gifted a sub if you're lucky. What are you doing, Step Bro? And Viscast, thank you for the five gifted subs. Here's a woman I break now. Expensive, so not everybody could afford it, but now even those of my friends who can't afford it are doing it. And, uh, well, let's just say I am trying to help my friends right now, and I think I'm gonna have like 10 refugees living in my apartment in, in the next month. And the amount of people that started leaving immediately after this was announced and immediately after Putin's address was insane. Literally in like hours after his address, all the direct flight tickets to Yerevan, Armenia, and Istanbul, Turkey were bought out. And there's been reports of like tickets to Belgrade, Serbia going for over $10,000 dollars a pop. Also, a few fun facts. In Russia, on Google, right after the announcement of the mobilization, some of the top searches were how to leave Russia, where to leave Russia without having a foreign passport, and even how to break an arm. Yeah, because if you break an arm or a leg or something like that, you're not being taken to the army, so. Insane. And also, there's actually been a down... That's only gonna take you so far once these motherfuckers are like, yeah, actually, we decided even if you have a broken arm, you still have to serve, you know what I mean? And I'm not even joking about this. I mean, they're giving him like old ass equipment, you know. What surge I mean? in the amounts of uh, online Counter Strike Global Offensive players, uh, because apparently Russians are getting drafted. So uh, <laughs> those who play CS:GO are playing CS:GO in real life right now. Oh man, this is just so fucked up. It's so bad. Pretty much every single country that borders with Russia that has visa-free entrance to Russia has basically a shit show going on at the border right now because there's a lot of photos online of the border between Kazakhstan and Russia, for example, where the lines have stretched like 15 kilometers from people just trying to leave Russia for Kazakhstan. Same thing is happening in Georgia as well. As I'm, sp as I'm recording this video right now, there's like a 15 kilometer traffic jam at the border of people trying to get into Georgia. I mean, it's absolutely fucking insane. And I want to say this. Uh, a Women lot of don't have to fight unless they're doctors and shit. And then they can be sent into the front lines as like a medical tech. Like nurses and doctors. People are making fun of all the Russians trying to leave Russia right now, essentially saying that, oh, you guys are fucking all Z, you know, you all support Putin. Why are you trying to leave your beautiful country? Go die for Russia, you know? And I understand, yeah, it's funny. And honestly, if it's Ukrainians saying that, yeah, I get it. But honestly, I think it's just kind of wrongful to group everybody who's trying to leave right now. Bro, this man has been cyber bullied so much that he's now officially cucked. Like, he just... He has been getting fucking so cyber bullied so relentlessly non fucking stop since Russia invaded Ukraine that like he literally is like, oh, I get it. I get it. If you think that it's funny, it's like, no, I don't think it's funny. I'll, I'll say it.
I don't think he can, but I'll fucking say it. It's not funny at all. These are not the motherfuckers who want to do this. Right now together, I understand the idea of like a fucking Z patriot who, you know, roots for Russia, you know, he's like, fuck Ukraine, fuck all you motherfuckers. And when Russia announces the mobilization and this guy who's like a patriot can actually go to Ukraine and now show those Ukrainians what's for, you know, he actually becomes a pussy and tries to leave and just dips, you know? Yeah, that's a really funny idea. And honestly, I don't doubt that there's thousands of people like that right now. For sure, of course. We all know it's easy to be a warrior and a soldier when you're sitting on your fucking couch in front of the TV rush watching propaganda, you know? Of course, but when it's your turn to die, nobody wants to do it, sure. Those people obviously exist, but there's just honestly a lot of people in Russia, first of all, that just cannot afford to, d to leave. And this is like a big thing for me, honestly, because I have really good friends who have the most progressive pro-Western mindset ever, and they would have left months ago if they could, but they just cannot afford it. And now it's like gotten to the point where they're ready to spend their last money to do it, basically. I these people down for not leaving earlier? I don't know. And honestly, I feel like a lot of people just don't have good enough foresight because I think I'm like really into politics. I've been closely following everything that's going on with Russia for the last probably eight years at least. And like, I can see where this is going. When I was leaving, I knew this might happen. So, you know, I dodged the bullet literally, but not everybody has no life like me and just sits reading about politics all day, okay? And news and shit. And a lot of people just realize the severity of the entire situation only now. So yeah, it's a bit dumb, but I feel like it's a good wake-up call for those people, you know? I feel like with this mobilization announcement, a lot of people's minds are changing right now, and that's actually really good. But that's probably one of the only good things that will come out of this. <laughs> one thing that I was also thinking about that- Wait, what? What did he say? What? I didn't even listen. Only now. So yeah, it's a bit- See where this is going. When I was leaving, I knew this might happen. So, you know, I dodged the bullet, literally, but not everybody has no life like me and just sits reading about politics all day, okay? And news and shit. And a lot of people just realize the severity of the entire situation only now. So, yeah, it's a bit dumb, but I feel like it's a good wake-up call for those people, you know? I feel like with this mobilization announcement, a lot of people's minds are changing right now, and that's actually really good. But that's probably one of the only good things that will come out of this. One thing that I was also thinking about that's really on I don't understand why you said Pepe mind lately is uh, that this influx of people uh, might actually really mess with a lot of the Russians who have left Russia a bit earlier because honestly here's the thing like I live in Georgia right this is a country Russia hasn't oh because he said like not everyone is sitting on uh, their asses and covering the news non-stop is that why you guys are saying Pepela he didn't fucking I didn't misunderstand what he was saying he didn't talk about me or you guys at all invaded before but nevertheless it's a country that has visa free entry for russians you can stay here for an entire year that's crazy and i'm just super grateful for georgia and for georgian people for being hospitable and for allowing me to have a fucking life somewhere you know i literally remember this shit till i die like straight up belisi is in here forever but quite honestly i do feel like with this influx of people now um the attitudes of the people are gonna change and uh quite honestly already being russian and living in georgia i low-key feel uneasy a lot of the time not in the sense that people are assaulting me or something like that that's not at all. It's just inside of me. I feel uneasy because I know I come from a country that did a lot of bad shit to this country. And so many Russians come in here. It's very anxiety inducing for a lot of Georgians. It's not only that the influx of new people have driven the rent prices up here. All I'm going to say is he says a Italiophobic Alfredo. Fredo is anti-Italian sentiment. And he's wearing that shirt. Here, but also just due to the fact that there's honestly too many of us here and there's gonna be way more and honestly I would not be surprised if people are gonna be like we had enough and that's well within their rights And I feel bad about it because I feel like I'm contributing to the problem You know, I put this on my Instagram story earlier how I'm like a fucking cockroach essentially That's just infesting countries that are not Russia and now these people have to deal with me being here like I <sighs> I feel bad about it, man. And now with so many more Russians coming here, I don't know. I don't think the people here are gonna be very happy. And that, in my opinion, might be some bad news for Russians living here, especially Russians like myself, who can't really go back to Russia. Although that's kind of like every Russian now. <laughs> I thought I was special, honestly, you know? But now everybody can go back, bro. And by the way, I don't want to sound like I'm condescending or anything. Like, oh, I'm a Russian who moved here in March. First of all, not only am I more woke, but second of all, I've also been here for longer, so you motherfuckers don't ruin this shit for me. No. Not like that at all. I understand what kind of shit people are going through and why they're doing it. But nevertheless, all I'm saying is that this huge influx of Russians into Georgia, Kazakhstan, Armenia, etc. It might make the people living in those countries not very happy. So yeah, man, I mean, I don't really know what else to say here. It's just a completely fucked situation. I don't know what the hell is going on. Like, I definitely think now, you know, looking in retrospect that I obviously made the right decision. Like I said in my last video, if you haven't seen it, I've left Russia six months ago. Like some people in the comments said, I quite literally 
literally dodged the bullets. Literally. I also want to address this. I've gotten a lot of comments from you guys saying that, so oh, Roman, what's going to happen to you? Can you get drafted? Can you get mobilized, etc., etc.? Well, technically, yeah. I mean, since they're taking p people at protests who are just like 18 year old Zoomers who have never had any military experience, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Anything could happen at this point. There's no rule of law. There's no logic. There's nothing. But will they? Um, first of all, I think it's unlikely because the way it works is that the people who have been drafted had a uh, a health ranking of A, mostly. Let me explain it really quick. In Russia, basically, when you go to the military draft office and you get your medical checkup, you get like a health ranking. A means you're like completely healthy, ready to serve Russia. B means you're fit to serve, but you have some health limitations. V, which is like C, the third letter of the Russian alphabet, means that you're not fit to serve because of your medical conditions but you could be sent to the army in case of mobilization or martial law something like that and there's ge which is like it means that you're not Yay. fit to serve at all like if you're disabled or something so yeah apparently right now most of the people that have been drafted so far that have been sent letters that you're being drafted and mobilized those people have been with the ranking a actually one of my friends who lives in uh, georgia now who's russian as well he's actually ranking a and he has served in the army so he actually got it and he's here in georgia so he's not coming back at all me though i haven't <laughs> served in the army bro why is he fucking outing his homie dude what the fuck homies dodging the draft in georgia only to get fucked over by no fuckers in a video bro don't snitch on him what the fuck yeah he's like yeah right here right here he lives right at this address in tbilisi okay <laughs> God damn! about that you can watch it i actually have asthma and due to that i got uh, the category v which is not fit to serve because of health conditions but could be drafted in case of martial law which russia didn't uh, you know enact by the way so realistically not right now but in the future who knows maybe but once again i have zero plans of going back to russia in any foreseeable future so i guess i don't care <laughs> so that's one thing i'm happy about obviously not being there right now that's good but yeah just a lot of things to be anxious and they can just go to jail, right, to not kill humans if they deny. This applies to all empirical so core soldiers. No. Yes and no. In America, you can just go to jail. But in Russia, it seems like they're not doing that and instead sending you to the front lines regardless. Like, they're not even letting you fucking be like, yeah, uh, okay, if you don't want to serve the military, you have to serve your prison sentence. They're literally just sending them. Uh, a lot of things to be worried about right now anyways guys yeah i know once again this video was also kind of like the last video random as fuck just me rambling but it is what it is insane times right now so everybody out there i hope you're staying safe he served already so the people who have been occupying us should seek ref refugee in my country i'm very conflicted about this brother there's a he's a conscript what do you mean like he served already it doesn't matter he's not trying to okay if your ultimate goal is to undermine the Russian military endeavors, you should be very, very excited at the prospect of Russia not being able to fucking fill its ranks with more military members. I do not understand what you, like, I, I don't understand what the fuck this is. It's just, like, very basic shit. It's literally just a W, okay? It's just a, a gigantic dub. You got Russian motherfuckers saying, I don't want to serve and I'm running away. Like you are literally undermining the military before it reaches your fucking border. 